still there. So that's why it's so important to understand this stuff and to learn how to adapt to lifestyle where you modulate your stress a little bit better. So what happens when we have a prolonged stress? Now instead of adaptive, we have a maladaptive stress response. So now you have a decreased immune response. Your immune system doesn't work anymore. Whereas before you had an increase, temporary increase in alertness, now you have a decrease in memory and learning. You have a decrease in reproductive function. And here's a big one. Whereas before you had an increase in pain tolerance, because that helps you survive your grizzly bear, over time this breaks down and you have a decreased pain tolerance with chronic stress. This is a huge factor in why so many people are experiencing pain. For no other reason, there's no organic, there's no real cause for the pain except their, their sympathetics and parasympathetics are miswired so they perceive pain because they have a reduced stress uh, pain tolerance. Uh, also, skin conductance, this isn't necessarily life-threatening, but it's worth noticing. In an acute stress response, your skin conductance goes up, but with a chronic stress response, you kind of wear out that response. It says, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, I'm not going to respond anymore, so you get chronically dry hands. So let's look at the rest of it we get an increase with insulin resistance and therefore weight. We get an increase in fatigue. We get an increase in chronic blood pressure called hypertension. And this is the big one. It's the biggest selling medication. You see half the list of the popular drugs are blood pressure medication. And in the medical books, it is called essential hypertension. That means they don't know where it comes from. And if you read the textbook, it's right there. This increases blood pressure. That is the cause. But because they can't find a physical molecule that they can pin it on, they say it's unknown. Okay? It, it really beats me. But uh, We have increase in respiratory problems. We have an increase in opportunistic infections because of the reduced immune response. Uh, we have an increase in bone decalcification. That's osteoporosis. We have an increase in autoimmune disorders. Psoriatic arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. We have an increase in strokes and cardiovascular disease and we have an increase in digestive illness. So do you see how all of these, these three slides, how perfectly and exactly they fit together and how that there it really is no disease out there that is not a stress problem. They, they have officially recognized that 95% of all doctor's visits are stress related. I think that's an understatement because I think the anything that's not an acute trauma, like a car accident or a broken bone or a gunshot or a knife wound, those those are traumas. I think everything else is stress. Absolutely everything. There may be a, an exception here or there, but so all of these mysteries now that when when you read the, the magazines and the journals and, and they say, well, we don't know what causes it, we don't know. Well, now you know. It's right there. And all you have, it's, and this is not unknown. It's not a secret. It's in, it's in the introductory textbook for medical physiology. It's just that nobody applies it because, and the reason we don't apply it is that we are we're so biased, we're so hypnotized in believing that the physicalness of our world is the most real one. We don't believe in things we can't see, and we can't see function. 
it's harder to quantify function than than two inches of finger or a pound of, of weight. Those are very easy to quantify, and and that's why we're stuck in in this erroneous model of the body, where it's all a machine with different parts that we can manipulate. It's all about function. It's all about brain and how the brain allocates resources in our body based on the situation we're in. When there's a grizzly bear, that's an appropriate response. When there is no grizzly bear, it's an inappropriate response. And that accounts for 99% of medical bills. Very good. Any questions on that so far? Got it all covered. Um, so now let's just wrap up and talk about what do we do about this. So everything in your body that isn't working is a habit that's gotten stuck. Everything that you've ever learned, every skill, every pattern, every belief that you have is a neurological pattern. It is something that you receive a certain stimulus, you're like a Pavlov's dog. You just initiate that pattern, you kick it off, and it runs automatically. That's where all of our reactions and virtually all our behavior comes from. So whatever is working or whatever isn't working is a neurological pattern. So the first thing that we need to do to change is to interrupt that pattern. We just There are many, many ways of doing that, but we just need to interrupt it. Uh, one of the absolute most effective ways is the chiropractic adjustment. And we can show you the research, we can show you the neurophysiology, that the adjustment interrupts that pattern. That is what it does. You can do this with many different ways. Um, you can change your thoughts, you can change your belief system, you can start meditating, you can exercise. The problem is, that it takes a lot of growth. And most of us, it, for most of us, it's gonna take years or decades to get to that point where we can change them on our own. So in the meantime, we can get it kick-started by, by getting adjusted. Now we've interrupted the pattern. Number two, we need to restore balance in the nervous system. So how does imbalance develop? Where does it come from? Well, let's say that, first of all, every cell in your body needs food and stimulation. It's called use it or lose it. So how do you stimulate a brain cell? You send an electrical signal. The brain is designed to process electrical signals. So in order to stimulate and use the brain, you send an electrical signal. Okay? You stimulate a muscle cell by putting tension on it, because that's what it's designed for. You stimulate a bone cell by putting weight on it in a field of gravity, because that's its purpose. So how do you send electrical signals to the brain? Is you fire off receptors. Receptors are little things that sit all over your body and inside the joints, and every millimeter of tissue has receptors that convert signals and movement and things in your environment into electricity so that your brain can process it. So 